Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you are tuning in with us today. We believe today's message is going to strengthen and encourage you. So get your Bibles ready as Pastor Jeremy File is teaching today's message. The next great event on God's calendar is the rapture of the church. Jesus is going to appear in the clouds. He's going to catch us up to meet him in the clouds. Forever we're going to be with the Lord. And Jesus talked about it. Paul talked about it. Peter talked about it. John talked about it. Matthew talked about it. Mark talked about it. Luke talked about it. Who am I missing? John talked about it. John the Revelator. On the Isle of Patmos, got the revelation of Jesus Christ. I think he talked about it a little bit. Every writer of the New Testament had something on the forefront of their mind. The king is coming. They turned the then known world, according to the world, upside down, according to God, right side up. By the way, that, you should take note of that. You always need to consider the source. Who is it that told you that the world's been turned upside down? People that thought upside down was right side up. That's who said that in the book of Acts. But God looked at it and said, this thing needs to turn. And let me tell you, we live in a society that needs to turn. And he's expecting to use you and me, filled with his power, filled with his Holy Spirit. Mark chapter 13, say, thank God for the word. Are you hungry for the word this morning? Mark chapter 13, I have it on the screen. Got a lot to cover today. Let's go. Jesus said, but of that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Verse 33, take heed. Everybody say, take heed. Take heed. I underline that. Look what he said here. Watch. Both of those words have similar meaning. It means pay attention, be alert, understand what's going on. He also tells us how to do this and pray. When you pray, you're turning your city light on. Everywhere you go, you're supposed to be shining a light. I recently bought these light switches. We were at a unique store, Aaron and I were, and I found these switches and I wanted to buy them because I have a couple of places that I don't want to have an electrician come and, a, and run electrical light, you know, you know all this stuff, so that I have electricity there. But I thought, these are cool, these are LEDs. They're light switches. You just flip them on and they shine the light. One of them was in my boy's playroom area, and it doesn't have a light right there. And, and so I said, look, boys, you can turn this on, but don't leave it on, because then it'll get dim. Well, sure enough, I got home the other day and uh, went up there and I looked, and that light was just barely, barely on. And I said, y'all left it on all day long. I told you to turn it off when you leave, right? So I turned it off, and it recharges itself, which is kind of cool. And it was just, I don't know, the next day or something, I go by, flip it on, bright once again. Like 500 and something lumens, praise God. I like that. No electricity needed. But it had to get recharged. And I thought, that's exactly how we are. You come here and... You're supposed to get charged up. This is like you putting your phone in the charger. You come in here, getting your spirit plugged into some power here this morning. But you get out here in this world, and it can do some things to you that causes you to dim that light. But I'm encouraging you, shine your light bright. Even if people go, whoa, whoa, that's, that's too bright. That's too much. Hey, don't get used to the darkness in this culture. Shine your light bright anyway. <laughs> Jesus said in verse 33 of Mark 13, take heed, watch, and pray. See, I was saying as you pray, that charges you up, especially when you pray in other tongues. The Bible specifically says that when you pray in other tongues, that you're charging yourself up, you're building yourself up. In your most holy faith, Jude said that. By the way, Jude talked about the coming of the Lord too. I didn't mention him a while ago. Every writer in the New Testament talks about it. Jesus here. In Mark, says, take heed, watch, and pray, for you do not know when the time is. It's like, verse 34, a man going to a far country who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to each his work and commanded the doorkeeper, watch. 
Look at your neighbor and say, watch. watch. Verse number 35. Watch, therefore. Now, I'm counting here. That's three times he said watch. One time he said take heed. And we're just three verses deep here. So he's like, take heed, watch, watch, watch. I mean, think if the master is saying something like this, you better start perking up and doing what he said. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Now, this is interesting to me. You obviously know the season, but you don't know if it's evening, midnight, at the crowing of the rooster. What's that? In the morning. Wow. What am I supposed to do? What are my marching orders? To watch. As you're watching, you get sleepy. As you're watching, you deal with real problems in life. As you're watching, you get familiar with the message to watch. And what happens? Well, most people stop watching. But never can you find a verse where he said, it's okay now to stop watching. We should be watching more keenly, more excited right now than we have ever watched at any time in our life. He says, watch, for you don't know when he's coming, in the evening, at midnight, the crowing of the rooster, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he finds you what? Just imagine, this was your last Sunday on planet Earth. Just imagine with me for a second. Just, just think about this for a moment. Would you like to spend this time before the Lord, before his word, sleeping? Some of y'all are hesitant to ask because that's your favorite thing to do when you come to church. So you're like, I don't know if I should answer that or not. Well, I'm not going to pick on anybody. I get it. Maybe you don't have peace in your life. And I pray that even if you do go to sleep here, that the word gets into your spirit because your spirit never sleeps. Jesus is trying to point something out here, though. You've got to be intentional to watch for the master or you're going to fall asleep. He says in verse 37, Mark 13, and what I say to you, I say to all. So this applies to everybody. Red, yellow, black, or white, male, female, wherever you're at, this applies to everyone. Jesus says it to us all, and he said it with an exclamation point. Watch for the fourth time. Anytime somebody's got to tell you something the fourth time, you should be doing what they're doing, especially if it's the master saying it. Take heed, watch, 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 watch. It's amazing how many things are missed out on simply because of a lack of watching or paying attention. Hey, greater. I said greater. Greater is he that's in me. One of the greatest, I believe, battles and fights for the everyday Christian is to shake off this world because all it does is make you dull. Makes me dull. Everything on this planet, even some of the good things, it's all meant. Talk about marriage, talk about kids, talk about jobs, talk about money. It's all meant to bring you out of the spirit realm and rub the world in your face. You got to do this. You're responsible for that. You got to figure this out. Oh my God, what am I going to do? What is it that God told you and me to get out of our life, cut off that friendship with that pagan, that heathen, that hell-bound sinner, cut this thing, this habit, this thing out of your life, and you got rid of everything but your one Jesus is coming. He said, well, how come I don't really feel like that's true? Maybe you haven't been watching. Because if you'll start tracking those that are watching, all of them are talking about it right now. All of them. All of them. All of this study this are talking about we have entered a very interesting time. Why? They're all watching and they've been watching for years. And they're stirred up. So I don't take my cues from the crowd that doesn't watch. They don't know. They weren't watching. I remember we read in Luke 19, Jesus wept over Jerusalem. And I want you to take notice, it was a city. It was the whole populace of the city. He wept over them 
because they didn't know the time of their visitation. Remember that? We read that. It's recorded, of course, and I, I, I joked about this, but John eleven thirty five 35 was one of my favorite verses as a kid because I had to memorize Scripture a lot. And that one is, are you ready for this? I still have it memorized. Jesus wept. <laughs> I, know, I, I know you didn't expect me to know that one, but it's there. I like that one, Jesus wept. But that was dealing with something personal. His friend died. And when someone you know and love dies, it can cause you to weep. And did you know it's okay to weep? Now, we don't sorrow as those with no hope, but it hurts on this side of heaven. It does. But concerning this, specifically, it's important that you understand the doctrine of the rapture because there's comfort attached to this particular teaching that's not available if you don't believe this. That's why I'm saying you've got to watch or else you don't even know what I just said, an application of this doctrine. Okay, it's recorded Jesus wept over Lazarus, even though he ended up calling him out of the grave after four days of being dead. But I, I want you to take note of this, and I'm, I'm taking time because I really felt prompted by the Holy Spirit. You know, those, there's things personally you weep for, but I want you to take note of this. Jesus wept for a whole city. That's totally different than weeping because Lazarus and that personal friend died. This is a different weeping. You got this? And the purpose and the reason he was weeping is because, quote, they did not know the time of their visitation. That caused him to weep. And yet most people and Christians that say they follow him don't even care about what time it is on his calendar. Maybe you've been like the little kid that asked way too early, is it, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No, it's not time yet. No, it's not time. Well, don't let that discourage you. We're closer now than we've ever been. It's worth asking the question, are we there yet right now? So paying attention is key. I was going to point this out. And just jot this down, study it later. Matthew 24, Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Okay? Without paying attention, you'll be deceived. Then jot this down, Mark chapter 4. Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Huh. Well, that's important. Now, I want you to look these up later make sure they're in these scripture references I'm giving you. I'm giving you the chapter. Notice I'm not giving you the verse. I want you to go look it up. First one is Matthew 24. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Mark chapter 4, here's what he said. Take heed what you hear. Have you seen what AI is capable of doing now? They're able to produce completely false information that seems real and is very believable. You may not know what I'm talking about, but... I don't want to dive too deep in it. It's a rabbit trail for sure, but I'll just say those that understand the technology and the capability of AI right now have been warning people, and there was a man recently that released this out to the public, what AI can produce, and a lot of people believed what AI wrote was true, but it was complete fiction. Wow. Take heed what you hear. Then jot this down, Luke chapter 8. Notice I said Matthew 24, Mark 4, Luke 8. So you can look at all those Gospels. Luke 8, Jesus said this, Take heed how you hear. So take heed no one deceives you, Matthew 24. Mark 4, take heed what you hear. And then Luke 8, take heed how you hear. I want to point something out because there always tends to be people be people that don't understand this, and this comes around ever so often. They've, they've liked to have said this to me many times. I don't know how many times now, but a lot. Well, I would like to come to that church, but you have the kids go to children's church. I do. Yes, I do. As we teach them the Word of God, and children's ministry is really close to the heart of God. You have to understand this. And they need this broken down even below the eighth grade level that I, pre I present things at. Right? Even sometimes I'm on that sixth grade or fourth grade level, but say... They need it down there at bite size level, right? Not only that, I think of this scripture every time because it's important that we have order. That's why the usher ministry is so important because they're all about order. And people have said, well, I don't like those guys going around. They've got earpieces in. I mean, come on, this is church. Exactly. The most important time of your life that where you're here positioned to hear the word of God, where I'm anointed. I am. I'm not, I'm not shy about this. I'm anointed. 
by God to preach the word. There's others anointed to do that too that will preach here. I'm not saying I'm the only one. But I'm saying here you are gathered this morning. And if you're distracted, I've got seven children. I know what it's like to be distracted with a child. You don't get near as much out of it, whether it's watching a movie, a date with your spouse, Why is it? Well, for a date with our spouse, we got to make sure we got child care. We're not taking them on that date because we got some business to handle. <laughs> right? Are you listening to me? But see, it comes to church. Well, I don't like it. You have the kids go out. Seriously, we got anointed ministers ministering to the children. But this moment for you is vital so that you don't have distractions, so you can take heed and pay attention. What you're hearing, that you're not deceived. And how you hear in this moment is very important. So if it's a distracted hearing, it's not the same as really paying attention. Now, gentlemen, here's some marriage advice for you. When your wife's talking to you, don't be watching a football game and yelling for your team. Some of you are looking like, really? When your wife's talking to you, it's not the time to be texting and handling another business. You can take this advice or leave it, but I'm trying to show you how to have a godly marriage. What is the, what's the term, Johnny and Lori, y'all use? Glorious marriage. That's what I'm trying to get, lead you to. A glorious marriage. How are you going to have a glorious marriage? She's trying to communicate, and you're out here thinking about something else. And trust me, it's easy for guys to do that. Ask me how I know. Don't, 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 don't. Don't ask me. <laughs> Been married 21 years. I've had to learn a lot. Even recently, you know, she'll talk to me, and she'll be like, She'll get quiet. I'm like, oh, I'm listening. I promise. You know what I better do? Put that sucker down and look. If you're listening, there better be something about you. Watching. You see, watching's connected to your hearing. And the Lord's speaking to us. He wants to keep you safe in this end time hour. But if you're not watching, then you're not hearing properly. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. You've been truly born for such a time as this. And there are people that have lived before us, that have run this race of faith, that are in a cloud of witnesses cheering us on, that wish to God they could be where you are. But here you are. And you got to be watching. you got to be listening. We've entered a time where we've got to be this way when it comes to God's word and prophecy of end time events. Just like if I would wait in the vehicle to listen to something I'm interested in. I got, I, I, hang on, hang on. You know, I, just give me a second. And my kids will, Dad, Dad, hang on a minute. Hang on, i got to hear this. This is how we have to be about God's word and his prophecy about end time events. With that in mind, go to Luke 12 and let's look at this. Aren't you glad to be in church this morning? Yes. Now I want you to catch this because if you track Jesus' ministry most of the time when the Pharisees showed up and the Sadducees and and the lawyers of that day to trap him in different things, he would rebuke them right to their face. He would call them things like hypocrites. and I mean, just right to their face. John the Baptist did it too, you know. I like that, you whitewashed tombs. <laughs> Who warned you to flee the wrath to come? You know, it's like, I like that straight preaching. But most of the time, when you track Jesus speaking to the multitudes, he didn't come with the rebuke. But he did on this day. And I think it would be pertinent for us to look and see why he did this. Luke 12, 54. He said to who? He said, it's right up on the screen. He said to who? Okay, and this is not the disciples. This is the multitudes. Now, they were in there. The disciples were. So were some Pharisees, by the way. But we're talking about to the whole crowd. He said this. When you see a cloud rising out of the west... Immediately you say a shower is coming. And so it is. 
<laughs> you could write, this applies to Amarillo. You see that coming from the West, you know it's coming here. You don't know how many times I've looked west and I see, if I see lightning, if I hear thunder, I get excited. <laughs> I'll say, do you see what I see? <laughs> it's coming. Rain's coming. Rain's coming. Y- y'all don't know. Sometimes people, they don't understand my Christianese when I drop lyrics like I just did. But hey, it's okay. A shower's coming. Jesus is telling the multitude it was the same in Israel as in Amarillo. If it's coming from the west, you know, a shower's coming. Yeah. yeah, verse 55. And when you see the south wind blow, which happens a lot in Amarillo too, you say, it's going to be hot weather. And there is. In other words, you're right. So he's talking to the multitude about the weather. I find that interesting. But then he flips the script on verse 56 of Luke 12. Hypocrites! I wonder if they saw that coming talking about clouds, talking about weather, it's going to get hot, you hypocrite. (laughs) See, if you can't be offended, you will be offended when you follow Jesus. Hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Are you kidding me? Not only did he weep over Jerusalem, a whole group of people, because they didn't know what time it was in their day of visitation, but now he's looking at these people and he says, hey, hypocrites. How many think Jesus was loving? Can I tell you? That was loving to call them hypocrites, to jolt them out of this. They'll look at the weather and they can discern that left and right. Some of y'all don't miss a forecast every day that comes. In fact, I'm, I guarantee if I was asked publicly, what's the forecast calling for? Some of y'all are going to know it just like you know your name. And that's not bad. But Jesus was like, you may know the weather, but hey, hypocrite, are you not able to discern the time? Jesus is coming. And most Christians are like, oh, yeah, we've heard that before. Well, Jesus wants his people to know what time it is on his calendar. Therefore, he made things super clear and easy to understand in the Bible. You want to look at it this morning? Yes, Might as well say yes, because we're going to Leviticus 23. <laughs> I just, I've got a joy about me because I know the king is coming. Let's go to the book of Leviticus. It just sounds heavy to a New Testament Christian. When you say the book of Leviticus, people start shaking in the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I don't know if y'all saw that commercial for State Farm about summing up the season in one word, and they gave four words. If you hadn't seen it, it made me laugh. I rewind it like three times. Me and my kids were rolling. Sum it up in one word, and it was like four words. And that guy's all, that's four words. He said, but when you bundle them all together, it's one. He's, <laughs> he's like, whoa. That's just what I see, you know, people. Yeah, we've heard Jesus coming. I mean, look, if you're not paying attention, I showed some headlines last week. I feel like showing more. There's more that's happened since last week. We're talking about what time is it. Let's not lose track here. Sorry, I don't mean to be silly. Leviticus 23. It's a pretty serious subject, actually. Leviticus 23. By the way, if you have this mindset, well, the Old Testament is is not for us, then you're going to miss out completely on what time it is on God's calendar because he revealed it right here. I want you to take note of this, Leviticus 23, 1. Who is speaking to Moses? Jehovah himself is speaking to Moses. The Lord is speaking. And here's what he says, verse 2, Leviticus, Leviticus 23. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, the feasts of who? The Lord. Now the Lord is speaking about his feast. And I hear people all the time say, well, it's the Jewish feast. The Lord said, these are my feasts. In fact, he doubles down in this verse. He says, the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be a holy convocation. These are holy convocations, plural, because there's seven of them. These are my feasts. 
Now see, the Jewish people for a while observed them, and that's good. They were in covenant with God. But let's get this straight as New Testament Christians. God has some feasts. He's called us to fast, and I like the feasts. It's the way to live, right? Feasts are mentioned here twice. Did you catch that? The feast of the Lord. And he said, they're my feasts. That's the exact quotes. The feast of the Lord, my feast. Now, feasts are, are the Hebrew word moed. Okay? So in the English, it's feast. But if you were speaking Hebrew, it's moed. Moed means appointment, fixed or appointed time. And it means signal. That's the definition of it. So I want to read this like that. These appointments, this fixed appointed time, this signal is of the Lord, which you'll proclaim to be a holy convocation. These are my appointments, my fixed appointed times, my signals. <laughs> so the Lord is saying, hold on, hold on. You want to see my calendar? You want to see what my appointments are, my fixed times? Look at these feasts. That's what God's saying here. Now, holy convocations is interesting too. Number one, they're holy, so that means they're set apart, they're pure. These are not just your average rehearsals, which is the definition of convocation. So get this, these seven feasts, these seven appointments are fixed times. They are holy rehearsals. Now, I just, I don't have time. To, there's so much to this. I just have to move. So I've got some things to show you here. There are seven of these, and you ought to study them out. They're all in the Bible, and I've actually preached on them in more detail than I am this morning in the past. But I was like, Lord, help me. How do you deal with something this vast? Kind of like Daniel's 70th week a few weeks ago. Some of you are still scratching your head about that one. But ask the Lord to help you. He'll help you understand this. But there are seven of these. They're holy rehearsals. What are they? Appointments, fixed times on God's calendar. Well, that does conclude today's television broadcast. But if you would like to hear more from Pastor Jeremy File, we invite you to head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find every sermon that Pastor Jeremy has preached for your convenience. If you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett here in Amarillo, and our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. If you're not from Amarillo, we would still love to hear from you. You can email us at info at acceleratechurch.cc or give us a call. We want to know how can we pray for you, where are you watching and tuning in from. We are so glad that you tuned in with us today.